this chapter, we will be introducing the concept of integration. In this lesson, we will be looking at differential equations with boundary conditions. Okay, hi everybody. Well, we're going to take a look at solving differential equations with boundary conditions. I, I like it when you get these big names like that because it sounds like you're going to be doing something really, really involved and, and impressive. Uh, but actually, this is a, a pretty straightforward and in some ways even kind of an obvious idea based on what we were doing just the, with the last lesson, um, finding antiderivatives. And, and the best way to do this, quite honestly, is just to jump in. Okay, So let's just take a look at an example and you'll see what I mean right away. So let's say uh, I want you to, oh, sorry, I should back up a little bit in here and say that when we're talking about solving differential equations, what we're meaning here is we're going to look at equations that have derivatives in them. And what we're trying to look for is the function that satisfies that given equation with the derivative in it. So for example, we might say solve y primed is equal to uh, x to the fifth plus x cubed, okay, Given that, uh, x equals 1 when y is equal to 0. So what we're trying to do here is we're going to try to solve this equation right here by finding a function, what y equals, that actually solves this equation, where the derivative of that function is equal to this. In addition to that, we want to know where, uh, so we want to have that function pass through that point, 1 comma 0. Now, the way we got to do this is first of all to to get rid of the the derivative here by taking the antiderivative. So if okay, so if y prime is equal to x to the fifth plus x cubed, then we know that y, we'll take the antiderivative of y prime, is going to be equal to x to the sixth over six plus x to the fourth over four. Because remember, with each term we increase the exponent by one, divide by the new exponent. And then when we're done that, with every term here, we're going to add this plus c, that arbitrary constant. Okay, because we looked at that before. Uh, you can have all sorts of functions that create the same derivative if, they're, uh, if they just differ by a vertical translation. And that's what that c refers to, really. Now, we know okay, that this function here, though, this is the original. This is y equals. So this particular equation okay, or function will satisfy this equation here. But we got a little bit more information than that. We also know that it's going to go through the point 1, 0. So uh, additionally, once we've got this here, we also have to consider that um, the point here. So we're going to sub in. Okay, we're going to sub in the point here. Uh, what is it? 1, comma 0. And when we do that, we get that 0 is going to equal 1 to the 6th over 6 plus 1 to the 4 over 4 plus c. Now this is this is quite nice here because we know one to the sixth is just going to be one sixth, and one to the fourth will just be one four, uh, will just be one over four here. Okay, so this is just going to simplify down to one sixth plus one quarter plus c, and it doesn't take a whole lot here to get that this is going to be five twelfths plus c, and so negative five twelfths is equal to c. That's our arbitrary constant. So now, because of that additional bit of information here, this constant that we were looking at isn't actually as arbitrary as it was at first here. So therefore, the solution to my equation is going to be y equals x to the sixth over six plus x to the fourth over four, uh, whoops, minus, I'm going to make that work here, minus 5 twelfths. I, put, I wanted, was almost about to put a plus sign right there. Okay, so x to the 6th over 6 plus x to the 4th over 4th minus 5 twelfths. And that's, that's the solution to this particular equation. And we call this bit of information up here, okay, where it goes to the point x equals 1 and y equals 0, we call that the boundary condition. So we're going to use that extra little bit of information to, to help us get that arbitrary constant. Okay, let's look at another example. All right, so here's our next equation here. Find the equation of the curve passing through the point negative 1, 3. And so right there, there's our boundary condition. That's what's going to give us enough information to get the arbitrary constant, whose slope is given by this function right here. So y prime is equal to 3 multiplied by x plus 2 squared. Okay, 
So there's, there's my slope. I know that to get the, the function out of this, I simply have to take the antiderivative of that. Now, eh, because of the way this is written here, this looks like, now bear in mind, this is the derivative of some function here. And when I look at that, it looks to me like it needed the, the, the chain rule to, to have its derivative taken. However, the derivative of what's inside is just one, so I think that's gonna work in my favor here. So with the chain rule, remember what you do is you take the derivative of the outside just like you would with any kind of a, a, a power rule. So I'm just still gonna increase the exponent by one. So this will be three multiplied by x plus two cubed. Okay, and then I'm gonna divide by the new exponent plus c. Now, I will simplify that. There's really not much to simplify. I'm just going to cancel the threes there. And I will get x plus 2 cubed plus c. Now, because of the way that it looked with the chain rule, I'm just going to quickly, kind of in my head here, take the derivative of this just to see if I go back to the original expression up here. And when you take the derivative of this, I'll multiply by the 3. That's 3 up front here. x plus 2, uh, take 1 away from the exponent. So it'll be 3x plus 2 squared. And then if I multiply by the derivative of what's inside, which would just be one, yeah, that takes me right back up to here. So that's good, that's good. That is the expression that I want for the, the antiderivative of that. Now, I'm going to use my boundary condition to figure out what the arbitrary constant is. So I know that the y coordinate is supposed to be three. So I'll make that negative, uh, yeah, negative one plus two cubed plus c. And negative one plus two, that's, that's easy, it's just two. Q, I, sorry, <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. It's I was anticipating where this was going. Negative one plus two is one. Cubed is one. So this becomes three is equal to one plus c, then just subtract, so two is equal to c. Therefore, okay, for my final solution here, I've got y is equal to x plus two cubed plus two. Okay, let's look at another example here, uh, but we're gonna add just a little bit more, uh, give you a little bit more information before we do the next one. Okay, before we get into this, this next example here, and really the, the last example, because there's really not much more I can show you here. Um, this, you need to be given some information so that you can, you can plug in uh, some values in for x and y to find the arbitrary constant. That's, that's the lesson. Now, Another little definition here, though, is we're going to look at parallel curves. Two curves are parallel, okay, parallel, if there's a constant vertical distance between the points with the same x-coordinate, which means that their slopes will be equal at every value of x. Now, if you just think about it, watch my, my fingers here. That's like doing this, right? If every time you look at an x-coordinate, you get this, there's a, a constant distance between the y-coordinates, we call them parallel. Basically, they're going to have the same slope. So i.e. you can look at it like this, uh, function f of x is let's say parallel to g of x, okay. if f of x minus g of x is equal to some constant c. Now just to demonstrate what this means and how this works here, if we take this expression right here and take the derivative of it, maybe I'll use a different color here, if we take the derivative of this, okay, we're gonna get f primed of x minus g primed of x. And remember what happens when you take the derivative of a constant, you're just gonna get zero. Now look at what this is saying. If we move that second term over there, this means the derivative of f is equal to the derivative of g. And really isn't that what we mean when we talk about slopes, okay, or parallel, when you think back uh, to have like a previous course here, you, you very likely looked at that, that two lines are, are parallel if they have the same, same slope. Now, we usually we limit that to, to lines, straight lines in a plane. That's what that definition means. But what we're doing is we're just taking that word parallel, that idea, and now extending it to functions, not just straight lines here. So let's take a look at an example of a, another question that could be asked kind of based on this idea here. We want to find, oops, find an equation uh, for the graph of f of x that passes through 
I've got a point here, 2, 5. Okay, so that's my, that's my boundary information, okay? That's what I need, my boundary condition right there. And is parallel to y equals g of x, given that, and here we go, g primed of x is going to equal 1 over x multiplied by the natural log of 2. And that's a little intimidating to look at as well. But, but let's just, uh, first of all, let's get to the point where we're going to need to do something with that, and then we'll talk about it. Again, I'll change color here just for a second. So, if they're parallel, okay, uh, if these two are parallel, we know that their slopes are going to be the same. So what that means is f primed of x has got to equal g primed of x. And so as a result, I know that f primed of x is going to equal 1 over x multiplied by the natural log of 2 in the denominator. So now what I need to do here is take the antiderivative of this piece right here. So I'm looking for now f of x is equal to. Now that's a little bit of an awkward looking one here, but if I think back over the questions that I've done, the derivatives that I've taken here, the presence of the natural log reminds me of the exponential functions that I that we've been working with and the logarithmic functions here and so that might get me thinking here um, this looks to be the derivative of a log base 2 now let's just take a stab at it. let's just guess this let's the, the 1 over x really does look like a logarithm and the fact that I've included a base 2 there uh, sorry a natural log of 2 down there really does seem to imply that that's that's the, sorry, the um, log base 2 here. And then, indeed, if I take the derivative of this, I get, I get this function uh, back out of it. Now, except for one little detail, and we've got to make sure that we're being careful about this. The domain here is that x can be anything other than 0. But here, x has to be greater than 0. And I don't like that. I want them to be... Uh, I want them to be closer than that. So I'm going to throw the absolute value on there just to, to make sure that those things match up. Then I've got the plus c that I have to include. Okay. Now, to figure out what c is, I'm going to plug in my boundary condition. So that's going to be 5 is equal to the log base 2, the absolute value of 2, plus c. And the log base 2 of 2 is just 1. And so I can see right away that the arbitrary constant in this particular case here is the number 4. So finally, I know, putting this all together, that f of x in this particular problem, the, the function we're looking for, is the log base 2 of the absolute value of x plus the number 4. Okay. So that's, that's basically how it works with a boundary condition. You simply take your antiderivative, and then when you got that arbitrary constant there, you plug in the point that you're given and use that to solve for that, that arbitrary constant. So now you haven't got this family of functions anymore. You've got a specific one.